Today's April 18th and I'm gonna give my husband a haircut. Let's see if I did it well or not. All right, welcome to Salon de Coco. Today I'm gonna give Ryan a haircut. I got into cutting hair from cutting my boyfriend's hair, my ex-boyfriend's hair. I just realized that when we went to the salon to go get his haircut, I felt like I knew what would look good and I was telling the hairstylist how to do it and I realized that like I could just learn how to do it myself. So I got some scissors and combs and um, figured out how to do it on my own. And then that way I get the haircut the way that I like it and we can do it whenever we want, whenever it's convenient, we don't have to go anywhere, and uh, we can save money over the long run. So I think it's good to be self-sustainable, independent, no? DIY. Yeah, DIY haircut. So what makes like, doing DIY stuff really appealing to you? Me? Yeah. Um, you know, it's like we always, we all spend money on all these things um, and we don't even really think about it. And really, we trade our time all the time for money, yet we spend our money super frivol frivolously. So if you really think about like, okay, how many hours did I have to work to like pay for that haircut or how many hours did I have to work to like pay for that coffee or that dinner out, it really starts to like make the dollars that you spend kind of equal all this time that you're like slaving away at some job or whatever. So mm -hmm. by doing things yourself, one, you learn new skills, which is, you know, invaluable. And two, you can save that money to allow you to do the things you truly want to do in your life. Like what type of dreams do you have? that you need to save up money for, right? Mm -hmm. And every time that you do something yourself, you don't pay someone to do it, for the most part, um, you know, that money goes into an account or goes to a place where you get one step closer to like achieving that dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been living really frugally like my entire life pretty much. And I like, I feel like I just, started really paying attention to uh how much money i was making and how much money i was spending and like in the peace corps they made it really easy for us because everybody kind of got the same amount of money and you had enough to pay for your um, housing expenses and everything was kind of like budgeted out like that now i'm kind of i'm a lot more independent and I don't remember ever like paying as much attention as I, as I'm paying now. Yeah. It's a skill, you know, you build on it and just yeah. like meditation when, you know, your thoughts come flooding in, sometimes you lose focus, but it's just like anything to keep, the more you keep trying at it, the more aware you become. And then, yeah. you know, you really do start experiencing the goals. Yeah. I think one big lesson that I've learned from budgeting is um, is that I think a lot of people think that if you have a budget, then it means that you can't like spend it on things that you like anymore, like fun stuff. But if you if you work that into the budget, you can really just have every everything that you want. You design your perfect life, and you just make sure that it makes sense when you put it down into black and white, and that uh, yeah, that those numbers and those activities are really equaling what your intentional goals are, right? For sure, for sure. And it's like, I tell people all the time, like when you make a game out of how little you can spend, it actually is more fun than spending that money. Mm -hmm. So like retail therapy doesn't got, it doesn't have anything on like the, the, the benefits that you get from actually tracking and not spending. Um, I don't feel like I really go without anything mm -hmm. and I really like seeing at the end of the month, like a, yo, I saved this much money or I didn't spend on all of these things. Yeah. And 
you know, when six months down the road, you can take that amazing trip you've always wanted to take, or you can literally quit your job and work towards your passion. Mm -hmm. Like that's what life's all about. What are some other things that you like to DIY instead of paying other people to do it for you? Well, the first thing that comes is coffee. Like, mm -hmm. yo, my coffee is the best coffee around. And, uh, you know, it's just a simple espresso machine. I literally found it. I didn't even buy it. I found it in my mom's closet. I got lucky on that one. But um, I'm sure it's probably not more than like 60 bucks. And I make coffee every morning and it's delicious. And I love it. Um, and I have a little coffee mug that I take with me if I go, um, you know, work at a library or in a park or whatever. Um, I don't know that I'd call it DIY, but, um, other things are like, you know, buying everything secondhand, like, which goes hand in hand with 15 to 15, right? It's mm -hmm. making the most out of what you, what is out there and what you have. Um, I can't tell you the last time I actually bought clothes from a store that, you know, it wasn't like a goodwill. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also just, um, to me, it's so important to not buy new things because that means that I'm not co contributing to this like never ending cycle of like <sighs> things being produced just to be thrown away. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. What else do we do? DIY. Um, we cook constantly. Cook a lot. <laughs> yeah. I cook all the time. Um, we eat out like these days. I mean, obviously it's different because of COVID craziness, but like we maybe eat out once every other week, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be generous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably less than that. But of course we'll have the one week where we may eat out twice that week. Yeah. Like one week uh, every month or every other month. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I feel like, you know, once you get, it's enough building another skill. Once you get good at cooking, and you get comfortable with it, not only is it cheaper and everything else, but like I generally think the food I cook is better, that we mm -hmm. cook is better than a lot of stuff you buy, you know, takeout. So, yeah, I mean, we definitely had like more than a few meals where I was like, man, if we had this at a restaurant, it would be so expensive and we can make this like anytime we want at home. And that's amazing. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I like to, uh, like stitch up my own things. Like, um, and I do a very terrible job of it, but, um, I like fixed my watch recently mm -hmm. because the, the watch band fell off and mm -hmm. I just got a thick needle and I sewed it back myself mm -hmm. and like I, um, made some jeans or excuse me, made some shorts from some jeans that like didn't fit too well, but the shorts, I just, I just cut the jeans and I sewed up. I like rolled up the bottom and sewed the corners and the shorts are amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I just get creative and they kind of turn into these little art projects that are, you know, kind of fun and super rewarding at the end of it when you literally did it yourself. Another one that we found recently um, amidst the COVID is I, I had a gym membership um, and I mostly like the gym membership because I'm addicted to the sauna. Uh, I see, I love the the benefits of the sauna, which is a whole other conversa conversation, but with COVID, um, obviously those are closed down and we've just been doing our thing in the morning with like some resistance bands, mm -hmm. um, essentially resistance bands and body weight. And it's been great. It's super easy to stay consistent. You don't need all that activation energy to like get up and out and go to the gym in that extra like commuting time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 35, 40 minutes after we've woken up, we've already done our 30 minute morning workout. And if you do 30 minutes a day, almost every day, you don't need a whole hour. You know, all you need is consistency. And if you do something super consistently, you'll see the benefits. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm loving having a morning routine and that has been awesome. I think that we've, we've like expanded on our morning routine since, since we started this kind of lockdown and it's mm -hmm. really working for me because I don't have to commute in the morning. I have an extra 40 minutes or whatever to, to do what I need to do. And then maybe I'm not uh, like getting ready the same way that I, <laughs> that I used to be getting ready. Um, and so there's even more time for that. So, um, 
yeah, it's just really nice to have that uh, extra time in the morning. For sure. I've been working from home for a few years now and that extra time is priceless. It really adds up like you extrapolate that over years and you're saving weeks and months of your life. You get all that time back. And you know, when you only have a handful of waking hours every day and you're dedicating a bunch of them to some other job as it is, or even if it's not some other job, the, you know, the work that you do even for yourself, like having an extra hour a day is huge. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And how often do we, do we think like, Oh, if only you have more time in the day. Of course, always mostly to like do what we want to do. Right. And not to do what is it like expected of us. Yeah. But that's, you know, you shave time off to sleep and then to do work and then to commute and to make food. It's like how much time do you really have left for yourself. So maximizing that is super important. I think the other thing too is like, um, if you want to have time for yourself, I think for a lot of people, they have to decide, okay, well, what does that mean mean for me? Like, what does it mean when I do something that's just for myself? And that's another thing that I've been kind of working on or just like putting some more intentionality into some more thought into. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just really important for us to be putting time to just like ourselves don't be on autopilot all the time just doing all the things like take a step back and think about how what's the best use of my time what do i really want to do with this hour and you might find it's like oh it's nice outside i want to go walk and lay in the grass in the park or something and you add those little things in and you'd be surprised the difference that it makes it's incredible yeah and then like if you really think about it okay well there's this lifestyle that um you know the man or whatever has deemed okay this is what you should be doing you should be um uh, paying this expensive gym membership you should be on instagram and um and facebook and making yourself look really good for social media you should be going out to expensive restaurants and all of this stuff and for some people that might be what they want right that might be the thing that really does it for them but what are the odds that that's really what does it for you right like there's a whole spectrum of a kind of people and you're just one little point in the spectrum. So you can't just live by the same prescribed life plan or like those goals can't be relevant for every single person. So I think that's why we need to take it upon ourselves to figure out like, what do I want? What does it mean for me to do something that's just for myself? And not for what everyone else thinks about me. Yeah. I guess for like on that note that like you need to do what kind of works for you. I guess it's great that like DIY stuff works for you and works for me. Like that kind of lifestyle, that kind of aesthetic is, is what we genuinely like. And I think it makes the kind of like DIY life a lot easier. For sure. Um, It's funny, you know, when people are in their twenties, early twenties, you know, they're all like, you know, if they don't have a partner or someone that they're with, they're all like stressed out about it. You Mm. know, it's like, Ooh, you know, I gotta find, find someone to, to spend my life with or someone to marry me or like whatever. And, you know, no matter if you're a girl or a guy, like if you're single for a while, like you get lonely and you know, you want someone, that's just how it goes. But there's something to be said about establishing, establishing kind of who you are and waiting for that. Um, until you're a little bit older and you know what you like and you know what you care about because you know when you and I met we both had an idea of the type of things that were important to us and we made efforts to like bring those into our lives so when we realized we both liked the same things and all of that it made us starting to bring our lives closer it made it so much easier more fun someone to enjoy the things that we already like to do with each other and mm-hmm. if when you're still like figuring out who you are and then you pull someone else in who's also doing that, it causes a lot of stress and a lot of hectic um, juxtaposition of, you know, what you enjoy and, and what your life is all about. I think that's why a lot of people, they say that you lo- you might lose yourself in the relationship because maybe you're doing something that um, is just because your partner likes it mm-hmm. um, or 
uh, even worse because it's what you think it's what your partner wants. And that would be even worse because you would just end up doing something um, that's not even really hitting the goal. Like you think your partner likes apples. And so you start making things with apples and getting the apples and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out they liked oranges the whole time. So, you, and, and what you really like is bananas. I think that can happen in relationships really easily um, where people are constantly trying to um, make concessions and um, compromises when a, a compromise doesn't necessarily need to be made. Like you can, you can ask for what you really want mm-hmm. um, even when you're in a partnership with somebody else. For sure. Absolutely. And it goes to like, that's friendships as well. Like even mm-hmm. friendships, embody those same things that's also why it's super important to just spend time by yourself and not be constantly with other people because then you can take a step back and you're like it's a saturday i have the whole day to do exactly what i want what is it that i truly want to do what do i really want to spend my time doing instead of being with someone and they're like hey let's go do this and you're like yeah sure there's nothing necessarily wrong with that but it's really good to take a step back and actually think about what it is that you want to do. Um, I, I also can extend that to like travel, Mm -hmm. you know, if a lot of people are scared of traveling on their own and sure, like, especially, uh, women, you know, there are certain places where maybe, you know, it's a little scarier to do that. Um, but in today's day and age, there's so many places you can go travel alone and really, you know, in that very free state of travel, try to figure out what you truly want to do with Mm -hmm. not just a day, but a week or a month or six months. And that can really allow you to explore kind of who you are. Um, I think both traveling with someone and alone, both are equally valuable and they both, they both have a place. Yeah. And and on that note, I'd say, um, let's say if if I were a solo traveler and I want to find myself through travel and you don't even have to go anywhere. You can just like have an experience maybe at home when you can't leave your house and you just, um, you, you think to yourself, Oh, I want to do, um, like, how do I find myself? You know? And it's like, Oh, well, I, I don't know what I like. Um, what one thing that you can try is, is like backtracking, What things have you done in the past that you like? Or you can start acting and without, without, um, like planning much, just try to see what makes you happy. And then you'll notice patterns and you can say, Oh, it's that thing. I didn't know I liked to watch ukulele videos. You know, I didn't know that I, that I, um, loved drag queens so much, you know? And, um, that's another way that you can kind of like get to know one can get to know oneself and, um, see what kind of things that you like. And from there kind of explore your identity and, um, like figure out who you are, what makes you different from other people? What makes you special? Yeah. And I think that, you know, do the, do things that you usually do with other people alone. Like if you think, oh, you know, no one can go camping. Everyone's busy. No one can go camping with me this weekend. So I'm just not going to go. And that's, that's just a cop out. You can do, you go camping by yourself and you'd be surprised how amazing it is. And sure. You might have that moment where it's like, oh, it'd be great if someone was there, but that's just, you know, your mind kind of playing with you. You can always go again with someone. So just enjoy that moment of being there alone and figuring out, ooh, if I want to walk down this trail, I don't have to ask, Hey, do you, what do you think? Should we go down this trail? I literally, whatever I want to do, I get to do it. And that's just a small example of like really exploring choice and like how it, what, what is your answer? Um, maybe you don't want to walk down that path, but someone else says, do you want to walk down that path? And you're like, sure. Why not? But maybe you just want to keep walking straight. So yeah, yeah, it's, um, and you'll be empowered. It's like, wow, I just went camping by myself. And I had this like beautiful moment waking up early, going and hiking by myself in this thing. And that I never would have had before you really, I think the beautiful moments really pop up in alone time. Um, whereas a fun moment or a memorable moment, of course, are, are with friends, but a truly like beautiful moment. I feel like many of those have come when I am alone or when I have been alone. Or when you're with me. Of course. <laughs> Of course, but, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's good. It's 
good. D, do do all the things. I'd say I'd say like definitely um, it's worth a try. Uh, I remember when I traveled alone and um, and I realized that what I really wanted to do was like have somebody there for me to be like, whoa, like wasn't that awesome? You know, um, and that for me, what I really liked to the travel was actually like the personal connection that I could have with whoever I was with and doing all these crazy things. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't traveled by myself. Sure. So um, even if it's okay to try something and then decide that it's not for you. And then it's also okay to give it a second chance. So will I travel again by myself? Yeah, probably. Um, but at least I know that my preference is to be with other people. Sweet. All right, I'm going to do your neck now. Okay. You know, I can't help but mention, like, while we're on the topic doing this kind of video, that um, at some point for me, I realized that, like, even though it was expensive, I did really like to go and get my hair done. I liked sitting there, having my hair worked on, and that it was the only thing that I had to do in that moment, you know, was to just, like, be there and then have get my get my hair done. And um, kind of goes to the point that we were talking about earlier where you just have to figure out what it is that you like. It might be something kind of unexpected. I never thought that I would be into hair, um, but turns out that I really liked it. And then I, turned, I, I learned how to do other people's. I learned how to do myself. And um, it's kind of like that rule of minimalism. It's like you don't have to get rid of everything. Mm -hmm. Just really do an inventory of like what, what brings you joy, what brings you joy and or utility or something that you use all the time. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't fit into one of those categories and get rid of it, but if it does, then there's no problem with keeping it. And also taking a break from it makes you appreciate it that much more. It makes you really understand that you do like it. So maybe you stop doing it. And then the answer is you, you, you do want to do it because it actually brings you joy and that's okay. Yeah. Or maybe you should just uh, shave your head and see what happens after that. For sure.